Welcome to Stuff You Missed in History Class, a production of iHeartRadio. Happy Friday. I'm Tracy B. Wilson. And I'm Holly Fry. This week we talked about Ibn al-Haytham. Yes. Uh, it has been on my list for just so long. I think with the notations of something like Ibn al-Haytham, father of the scientific method, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did not know anything about this UNESCO International Year of Light that happened at this point five years ago. Yeah. Um, I did watch the short film that is available online. I have two things to share about it. One, I shared with you, Holly, while I was working on it, which is in the animated sequences that show, uh, you know, the story of of Ibn al-Haytham's discoveries. He's wearing this bracer that has an abacus on the inside of it. And wow, did I get distracted by figuring out whether this was a real garment slash tool that people wore. Right. Or whether it was something that uh, was the, if so, incredibly delightful invention of, like, the person that was uh, that was doing this. And, and um, in my limited time that I had available, I did not find the answer to that. <laughs> but it's, I think, in that little, it's about a 15-minute, I think, film, and it's in that film in two different places. And I was just like, what is this? It's so cool. <laughs> I don't even know how to use an abacus. See, I watched it and went, Man, Omar Sharif was so handsome right up to the end. <laughs> did you? So my second point is, did you watch all the way through or did you just watch that bit of it? Um, I watched all of it, but I will say I watched all of it while also monitoring a cat that had recently come home from a vet visit and just needed uh-huh. something to keep an eye on him. So I would not ever claim that I had a full okay. encyclopedic memory of what happened in that that entire short. Um, so we said in, in the episode that this was Omar Sharif's last film role. And um, in the credits are clips of him talking about doing it. That oh, I, got I did really not see emotional that. about. Okay, I did, which is probably good because I would have fallen apart. Yeah. Um, basically, he talks about how he had not been active as an actor for a few years because, in the process of aging, he didn't feel like he could do as good of a job at it anymore. But he felt like this role was really important. Um, and I was like, just sobbing <laughs> at my desk. I got very emotional about it. I don't, like, I don't feel like a particular, it's, it's not like I walked into the uh, that short film being like, I am Omar Sharif's biggest fan or whatever. Like, right. I, I, I did not have a particular emotional resonance going into it, but by the end of hearing him talk about it, I was, like, falling apart. So anyway, uh, that whole thing, again, was called the International Year of Light. And, um, that, so that that film is still there. It is, um, it's pretty fun, and a lot of things about this episode were really fun. The the descriptions of how people thought vision worked, those were really fun. I love those. The story of like the accidental formation of a of a camera obscura through the window shade may or may not be, you know, apocryphal. So many things that are like the really memorable story about the how the scientific discovery came to be, like, a lot of them turned out to be apocryphal, and yeah. it's been so long ago at this point that who knows. Uh, but I still love the idea of walking into, like, the the darkened room in your house and kind of being like, what's that spot of light on the wall? Why can I see outside in it upside down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would not be, I don't think that observant. I'm embarrassed to admit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, anyway... I'm glad I was able to finally move this episode up to the top of the list. Me too. This week we talked about waffles. We did. I'm still yeah. hungry. I mean, I say still. <laughs> we just finished talking about it a minute ago. Uh, yeah, I will say this. I mentioned it on Twitter. Doing research on food history makes you want to eat a lot of that food. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many waffles I made while researching this I was reading about it over the course of like a week and I kept going oh, maybe waffles for dinner again um one thing I did not get into in this episode in case anyone is wondering why I didn't touch on it is waffle cones oh yeah yeah there's a reason is it because it's so hotly debated who gets the credit for developing waffle cones 
Yes. But, like, the stories are all over the map. Like, there's a... um. One particular expo, is it 1904? I should have made a note. Um, that is often credited with where the waffle cone was invented. It is uh, 1904 at the World's Fair. The good story, the fun story, and there there are a lot of iterations of this story that play out in waffle cone development, is that um, it was made in an instance when there were no cups available for I- an ice right. cream vendor, and he ran next door to a place that sounds like they were making something more like jalebi and rolled it into a conical shape and put the ice cream in that. It's a great story. Mm -hmm. But there are pictures of children holding, like, actually fully formed cones at that (laughs) that World's Fair, so it doesn't really add up. I feel like we might have talked about this in our prior episode on the history of ice cream, maybe. We may have. Um, It really gets... um, uh, a lot of discussion and some very strong opinions. Mm-hmm. And also it's really impossible to untangle. So I just didn't want to introduce it because it becomes a whole thing where like if you explain every possible story and its viability or not on mm-hmm. the timeline, that becomes a whole other episode of its own. Anyway, waffle cones. I will say this. Here is the gift I give the world. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> this is not a waffle, a savory waffle made with batter. But it is a savory waffle, which I make and I love, and it's one of my favorite foods on the planet. After holiday meals, like Thanksgiving or Christmas, if you do like a turkey spread with stuffing or dressing, whatever you call it, take some of that leftover dressing, mix it with a raw egg, put it in a waffle iron, you get dressing bread. (laughs) I think you told me this one time and I was like, you're a genius. It's, I'm not a genius, but I do like to mess around with food in the kitchen. And this is one of my greatest experiments because then you can like put cheese on it. I like Mm -hmm. to put like um, mashed avocado, smear it on there and then put like Parmesan or something on it. I also will sometimes layer it with prosciutto and cream cheese. It's super decadent, but it's really delicious. And I just highly recommend it. That all sounds really good. (laughs) Um, everybody experiment with things in waffle irons. You can also use a waffle iron to cook eggs, like to make scrambled eggs if you want to make a fun shape to make a sandwich. Uh-huh. Works like a charm. I love it. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of messing around with, with waffle irons. <laughs> 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 because I'm a big fan of waffles. I um, I like a very buttery laden waffle. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's the best. It's the best. I'll do like a chicken a la king and put it on a a savory waffle that doesn't have sugar added. Mm-hmm. Delicious. Delicious. Yum. 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 Yeah. All right. Now that we all want to have waffles, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll bid you adieu on that subject. Uh, we hope this Friday episode finds everyone well and that you have a good weekend. Uh, and we will see you again for classics tomorrow. If you would like to subscribe to the show, you can do that on the iHeartRadio app at Apple Podcasts or wherever it is you listen. Stuff You Missed in History Class is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.